Hey Worship Leader, welcome back to the channel. Today is a good day because Line 6 just gave us a brand new software update, 3.15, and I got everything ready. I downloaded and uploaded and factory reset and did all the correct backup things to get my Helix LT up to date and ready to go. I plugged it in and was about to hear some of these new sounds and I thought, why don't I just turn on the camera and let you guys hear it with me? I literally have not listened to any of the new stuff yet, so let's just do it together. As you guys may know, I'm a huge fan of the Helix family line of products, the big Helix, the HX Stomp, the XL, the HX Effects, and this update is for all of those units. So if you have one, let's settle in and figure out what these things sound like. All right, so I got the release notes up here, and what I thought we would do is just build a preset with all the new things. And so the first thing we have is a new amp. Yes, new amps are great, and I've heard good things about this amp. It's called the Von 2, and it's like French or something, I think. Let's just do the amp and cab first, right here at the bottom. Amp and cab, it comes with the, comes with the male C12Q cab. Okay, we'll mess around with that. All right, straight out of the box, it sounds like this. <laughs> I like that. Uh, let's just crank the drive and see what, what that does. I mean, that sounds good right out of the box. Let's go ahead and turn our input gain gate on so we don't get any noise. And uh, let's see, we have the HP filter. Let's see what that does. HP filter, higher values result in tighter distortions in thinner cleans, lower values, looser distortion, warmer cleans. Well, I think I would be a warmer clean type person, but let's see. So I bet if we were to put like a, a drive in front of this, like a rat, let's try the rat. The ratatouille. And bring it all the way down. That's pretty cool. Um, it's got this, that's unique. That's not typical. Let's bring the game somewhere in here. Let's just do eight, see what we got. That effect kind of sounds like the sag. Um, but let me just do what I normally do with these parameters here. I usually get rid of all the hum, bring down the ripple, bring up the bias and put that down. <laughs> That actually changed the sound of the amp pretty drastically. I like that better. I don't know, I, I like that, I like that pretty good. What's depth? <laughs> depth on an amp? Presence depth, you may notice this amp was lacking regular bass and treble. This is accounted for with depth and presence. All right, let's, let's, let's work, let's try it. So you can kind of just act like presence is treble and depth is bass, maybe. So we want a more boomy end, we could do this. Boomy bottom end, we could do this. If we invert those. I'm bring down the channel volume so I can bring up the master. It's 
clean it up a little bit. I would run my amp like that. So let's don't waste any more time. I will come back. Sorry, I'm just getting excited and jumping into things. So the next thing that we have, oh, is a compressor. Yeah, well, let's put that at the beginning of our chain. Dynamics, Ampeg Opto Comp. Compression is like uh, the ratio. And I think it said somewhere in the middle is like three, three to one. When I was reading the notes earlier, at five, it's three to one. I usually do four to one, so we'll, we'll bump it up a little bit. And um, yeah, I usually blend in a little bit. Let's just see what that does. Sounds pretty good. Let's move on. We got a lot to do. Oh, a new Ampeg liquefier chorus let's go find it put it right after the amp we'll do the stereo version because why not boom here it is chorus the rate i always like setting it to my bpm see what it sounds like out of the box <laughs> what is that's thick rate adjust the speed of the chorus okay the type liquefier is actually two courses in one so this could be like the mr black has a double chorus i think hence the dual default if you prefer to have a traditional chorus pick single and everything else is kind of okay well let's 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 just toggle on and off single <laughs> There is a lot going on with the single. I think it still sounds really good. Um, I usually bring the mix down. That already sounds like mix is at 100. Let's go back to dual since I mean that sounds that sounds pretty nice. Oh, what is this? The Helosphere. Oh, this is the delay and reverb. I was very interested in this. So let's go pick the stereo version. Helosphere. Okay, so what we have here is a delay that has its own built-in reverb, which is pretty cool. Let's just hear what it sounds like here. I heard this in another video. The reverb doesn't start until uh, the first delay. So it's like dry. Your initial pick attack is dry. And then it comes in, which is unique. It's super ambient and nice though. I love that. I mean, that just sounds, sounds good the way it is. I mean, settings are awesome there. I would probably take the mix down and the feedback down a little bit. The cool thing about this delay and the fact that it's a reverb, but it doesn't overwhelm your sound. The fact that the reverb comes in later is like kind of like pre-delay on a reverb. It adds a little bit of delay, not talking about the actual delay of the picking note, but pre-delay on a reverb is where the higher the pre-delay, the more separation between your picking note and when the reverb comes in. Now this is pretty extreme, but what it does is like once it's already in there, you, you still get clarity on the notes that you're picking with this ambience behind it.
Yeah, I really love that. I'm gonna be playing around with that more. All right, we gotta keep moving. What's next? More delays. Well, let's just try them. Oh, we are running out of DSP quick. Yeah, we already can't do that. So let's, well, let's come down here. We'll come down here. That's why I got the Helix out anyways. That's because I was making everything stereo too. The ADT, now what is this? Original double tracking tape modulation, double tracking, saturate, wild flutter. This might be a lot like the, um, my keyboard player is about to get one. Uh, the Strymon Deco. Let's see what it sounds like. Oh. Kind of has like a vintagey double tracking thing. Well, let's let's pull some wow and flutter up. I don't like some wow and flutter, and let's just increase this delay time. Saturate can get overwhelming quick and it brings up the volume a lot. So you have to use the level to bring it back down. Oh, we got a bunch of controls on this. I mean, we just added overdrive. Let's leave the saturation back off or very little and play with some of this other stuff. Oh, we could invert. What does that even mean? This mixed with the double chorus. Mixed with this. It's a lot going on. That's fun. Let's keep moving on. I know we got some other reverbs in here. Oh, we got a crisscross delay. Let's see what that does. See if we have room for it without having to delete some stuff. Crisscross. What do we got here? They're already panned back and forth, left and right, pretty extreme. Let's do a, let's make one a dotted eighth because quarter and dotted eighth always sounds good. This cross feed here. Let's see what happens when we pull it all the way up. Okay, if we bring that all the way down, what happens? the cross feed all the way off I mean if I had to pick one of the two extremes it's probably better somewhere in the middle okay the trails are longer when the cross feed is all the way off that's just like but up but up but up dot dot and this one it's like they're being fed into one another. So like if you're running two different delays, which this is what that is, um, this feels like you're running two different delays and they're, they're uh, in series rather than parallel. Parallel would have them completely separated. You're hearing them at the same time, but they're not interacting with each other. So the cross feed, when it's all the way off, sounds like they're interacting with each other. They're messing with each other and it tends to trail on longer, whereas that just sounds like two different delays going on at the same time. So I would probably just leave that all the way off because I like running delays in uh, series like that. Is that what that says? Let's check. Crossfeed controls the amount of a delay line fed back into... Yes, okay, so that's, just, that's exactly what I was saying. All right, cool. Let's move on to the next thing. Oh my goodness, another delay. The tessellator. The tessellator. 
Oh, well, let's just bring it in and see what it does. I'm, not, I'm gonna just gonna switch to it. Let's turn that on. Is it on? What, what does it do? Okay, it said that we need to assign a foot switch to it. So let's do that. Okay, stop that. It's kind of like a looper, okay? It's ramping. Speed. Um, that's kind of cool. I wonder if there's a way to make like a drone with that because it said drone machine um, I'm just wondering if I just go forward and swell in something pretty like this other delay My camera stopped, but the audio kept going, hopefully. So anyways, I was droning and it sounds pretty good. So you could feed this into like a really ambient reverb, which we might do that here in a bit. Cause next, I think we have some reverbs coming up have the ratchet which is I think something very similar but a lot more simple so we might could mess with that um, later but I want to get to this dynamic plate um, I love the dynamic hall reverb so I'm feeling like I'm gonna like the dynamic plate I like plate reverbs um, a little more shimmery <laughs> So let's see what we got here. We want to see how long we can, oh, we can go, oh, infinity with this. Well, let's just see what infinity sounds like. To infinity and beyond. I, I like that. See, one of the things I was wondering, like if you set this to a foot switch and you bring the mix up, you could also kind of drone Click it off and play on top. Or leave it on infinity and bring the mix way down. Scoop some of the mid, the low frequencies out of it. All right, let's bring it down to something a little more manageable. And dampening. Oh, so it was way down here. Can make it darker. I I love that reverb. 
That sounds amazing. Let's get a little bit cleaner amp sound here. Um, a little more bass. Very cool. I like I like that. I'm gonna be playing with that reverb. Might as well check out the uh, dynamic room. We've had the dynamic hall, and uh, this only goes up to three seconds. So on a room reverb, I like to bring the mix up. My room slap ambi. If y'all know about the the expanse back. Okay, let's diffuse that more. Bring the pre-delay up. Early reflections. Sounds pretty good. So it's just more controls on a room reverb. Um, so, I don't know, I, I like the, the legacy room reverb, but that sound, sounds good. Let's turn that off. I think we have some shimmer stuff coming. Dynamic room, yes, here we go. This is the one I'm excited about, so let's exit that out and get a shimmer going. A shimmer, let's just see what it sounds like when they bring it up. It feels like the reverb is completely separated from my tone. That's weird. It's just so far in the background. So usually with these controls, anything over 50 is you're losing your original guitar tone. Hmm. I'm going to have to spend some time with this. I don't, I don't, I'm not a fan. I mean, they've never been, Line 6 has never been good with, uh, I mean, if you ask me, the octo reverb didn't sound great, and this doesn't sound great to me either. It's probably because they haven't dialed it in. I mean, that sounds... It seems like you would use this in conjunction with another reverb, like the dynamic plate. Maybe run it into the plate. It just, um, yeah, it just, like if you were to bring these to unison, it should just be a regular reverb, but the reverb is not responding like a typical reverb. <laughs> I guess it is. It's just so in the background. Is there something that I need to bring up? We will play with that more later. Let's move on. I was excited about that, but uh, it's not really what I was expecting. So we have some other legacy effects. They say don't sleep on these. So we've got some other features here. But let me just uh, bring up, since we've done some stuff, and bring up a preset that I would actually use. I think the uh, Helosphere is definitely something we could use. What was this? Oh, that was that. Let's just do Amp, Cab, Chorus, Helosphere, and let's get the Plate Reverb. No, we don't have room for that. So let's put it down here. I mean, that's usually how I run things. I usually get a... No, no, room. I usually get a room reverb, bring down the decay, bring up the mix a bit, and just get my first sound. But I forgot, we already have reverb in that up there, but... Thank you. 
I like that filter closer to the bottom for sure. Let's get a drive here. Oh man, we're running out of spots quick. Top secret OD. Well, let's just move this down here. Man, when I go to make this stuff on the HX top, I wonder how much I'll be able to use. Um, I love the Timmy. Let's use a Minotaur, because why not? Bring down the drive. <laughs> All right, that room reverb, I would like to dampen it maybe a little more, diffuse it. I wanna high cut it. I don't know if I like that room reverb even as much as like just the legacy room reverb. Let's see if I can fit it in here. I usually do something like this. Bring the mix. Well, the mix is already pretty much up. Bring the pre-delay up. This is the room sound I like. And if that's too much, you can bring the pre-delay down and bring the mix down. I mean, I just like that. So can this room make that kind of sound? I guess I could bring the pre-delay up. I noticed that right there that this pre-delay goes to 200. And I usually go to about 60, and I was thinking this was the same, but it only goes to 100, so I was real low. So I should crank this up. It's just something about it. I just not loving. It. Is it this early reflections? Hmm. Maybe it's just because I'm old fashioned. This is what I'm used to like hearing. Maybe I need a uh, more decay. See, I, I'm not a fan of that. I don't like it, so I'm taking it out of there. I don't like that. Maybe we'll add a shimmer. Let's add a shimmer. And um, we've octave up. We'll just leave it where it's at. So we have our room. Now we have a shimmer. That's way too much. Bring the intensity down. pretty usable when you bring the shimmer down and then the dynamic plate bring this decay up make this our our ambient stuff take some of this damping off a little bit bring the mix up Was, uh, mono anyways but it sounds good with that shimmer behind it now we'll bring the uh, liquefier in here we got to get that mix down
Yeah, okay, so there is a lot of stuff in here and it's gonna take some time to uh, really settle into it, figure out the right settings, but uh, this video was not about that. This was just about bringing you along and letting me and you look at this for the first time. But I wanna know, let me know in the comments down below, uh, what is your favorite new thing? Mine would probably be the amp and then probably this reverb and delay mix, other than the fact that there's that delay. The reverb doesn't come in until the repeat happens, which is a little, a little awkward, but if you pair it with another reverb, but the reason I was thinking I was drawn to it was because maybe I thought you could save a block and not have to have another reverb. And so we'll see how, when I get the HX stomp up and running, how the DSP is. Anyways, got some more stuff to figure out, but let me know what is your favorite down below. If you like the video, like it, do all the YouTube stuff, and I'll see you in another video really soon. Bye.